right, good morning, good morning. It is great to have you guys with us this morning. We want to welcome you um, to worship with us. Uh, we're going to get started uh, singing in worship. I'm going to invite you guys to stand up with us. We're going to sing Victory in Jesus, so I'm going to encourage you to sing along with us. sing that again. Live stream, you're going to sing it again. Okay? Do you realize what you're singing? Are you listening to the words? Because of what our Savior did for us, we have eternal life. We have overcome sin, death, and the grave. When I was a youth minister, and I'll admit this was a long time ago, I did a survey one time, and that was when choruses and all that were just starting and be becoming popular. Uh, but I did a survey, and there was tons of great choruses, but the youth's number one song was Victory in Jesus. That was, But I'm just telling you, when you sing it like this, Victory in Jesus. that's not their number one song. Okay, so we're going to do it again. Can we do that? I know we're, we're goofing with the word people back there. Okay, we got it up there. Let's sing the first and the last. And let's pick up the tempo. Let's crash the drums. Let's do whatever we got to do. But let's sing it like we're singing to our Savior, all right? Amen.
Next was I was going to sing it. <laughs> so if you don't want the preacher singing it solo, then you better sing and clap, okay? Hallelujah. All right, let me get my, my notes over. I want to read a passage of scripture to you where I'm in my sermon series on worship, and I saw this little verse this week, and I wanted to share it with you, talking about you can worship God anywhere, at any time, in any particular way, but you also and need to worship in the fellowship of believers. Um, but just look at this passage, Matthew chapter 14, verse 28 through 33. It's a pretty familiar passage, Jesus walking on the water. Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And he said, come. You have to be careful about what you ask for <laughs> with our Savior. Peter got out of the boat, and he walked on the water, and he came towards Jesus. But seeing the wind, he became afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and took hold of him and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind stopped. And those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, you are certainly the Son of God. Let's pray. Almighty God and Father in heaven, we come before your eternal throne today, and we just thank you for life, just to be able to be here this morning in your presence, in your house, amongst your people. Father, we have some watching on live stream today. There are some here that are facing difficulties and hardships and loss. And nobody else knows about it, but you know. May your comfort and peace be with them. Wrap your loving arms around them and may they know and feel your presence. Even in the midst of the storm. If we'll but call out to you, you will reach out and save us from the waves. Father God, this nation is in turmoil. And we need you. We need you. Help us, Father. Show us what to do. Strengthen us. Give us a resolve to live for you in our life. Above everything else in this world, help us to put you first. Then and only then will we be able to withstand the storms that may be coming. Father God, help us as your people to show love, mercy, and grace to everyone we encounter and reflect the love and the glory of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And may we all understand what worship, true worship, worship in spirit and in truth is. For those that could not be here, those in the nursing homes, those that are shut-ins, 
those that are incarcerated, those that are in the hospitals, Father. Wrap your loving arms around them and give them an extra measure of your presence, your peace, and your comfort, Father God. But help us to always remember we are your hands and feet of ministry here on this earth. Use us to reflect your glory and your love to a lost and dying world. We pray it all in the name of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And all the people said? Amen. All right, you may be seated. Thank you for joining us today at Eastside Baptist Church. Live stream or here in person, we are certainly glad to have you with us this morning as we worship uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, um, all three together as one. And uh, we're glad you're here. And if you're a visitor or a guest in person, we would ask you to take a visitor's card. Um, we don't pass the offering plate anymore. There's buckets at the back to give uh, as you dismiss if you want to do that. Um, if you're a guest, drop the guest card in the bucket. and We'll get a copy of that so that we can share a letter or a card of thanks uh, for being with us. Um, a few announcements uh, just to be aware of with our bulletin. Um, we do have our Women on Mission garage sale this week. You can begin to drop off some stuff Wednesday night at 7.30. Don't come before 7.30 because our faith weavers are still up here and they dismiss at 7.30. So right after that, you could come and bring some things. Then Thursday morning. What time Thursday morning are y'all going to start? Doors open at 8. Okay, so you can begin to bring stuff up here then. And I think some of our youth, I hope, on Wednesday night are going to be back there to help get tables and racks and everything set up. All the proceeds from our Women on Mission garage sale goes to do ministry. And so we praise the Lord for that. And they take our discarded items that we don't want anymore, and um, they use them uh, to be a blessing and do ministry in the name of our Savior. Bible conference is coming up as well. We'll have a meal on Saturday night at 6 o'clock in the fellowship hall and then brother Paul Burleson will teach session one and uh, the great thing about uh, this Bible conference a new focus on the Christian life if you've never heard Paul Burleson uh, speak he is a tremendous gifted Bible teacher and I would encourage you if at all possible to come Saturday night and hear that first message he will be in the service Sunday morning preaching and then he'll do two more messages, one Sunday afternoon, one Sunday evening, and we will be done. All the messages are out of 1 Corinthians and deal with the new focus on the Christian life, and we need that now uh, more than ever before. So please consider coming to hear Paul Burleson teach uh, this, um, this next weekend. Now, uh, the other big thing that I want to make you aware of is... This realm, and you see that in your bulletin. We have a video that we're going to show right now that'll kind of kick that off and show you a little bit about what it is, and then Wes is just going to share a little bit about it. Here's a great way for our church to connect together. We all know that being the church doesn't just happen at church, it happens real time in real life. But it's hard to stay connected busy lives, coming and going, but we need to stay together. We are the body of Christ. We each need the fellowship, the unity, and the support. So let's make that connection easier with the Connect app, just for our church. Once you download the free app, you can create your own personal profile, keep it up to date with life changes, and share it with others you choose. You can easily communicate with your small group, team, or other members. See upcoming Bible verse readings, offer encouragement, ask for prayer requests, volunteer, and more, all right from your phone. This is a great way to keep our church family in the loop on the important things happening in your life and help you stay connected with them. Keep up with all our events, whether they're at church or not. Invite people to your next outreach project. Capture RSVPs, post a comment, and even see what they're bringing. And hey, good news. You can go ahead and recycle that outdated paper membership directory. Now you can look up members in our digital directory. See a new member at the park and can't quite remember their name? 
pull up their details on your phone so you can say hi. Also, from their profile, you can give someone a quick call or email. That's easy. Giving your tithes and offerings is way easier now, too. You can even track your gifts to the church, set up recurring donations, and monitor progress toward your pledge goals. The best part is, you can do it all from anywhere, at any time, right from your phone. Our new Connect mobile app is a real ministry tool. It's going to help us a lot. Let's be the church, together. So download the app and let's get connected. some software for, for the office work, and it comes with so many things, um, including uh, free online giving, which is going to be significantly less than what we used to pay for online giving. So uh, if you are an online giver, that will be changing over, um, and it will save the church uh, some money uh, each month, which is a good thing. But there's also so many communication tools within this. Um, you guys can be as involved as much or as little as you want with this. Um, so basically, there's a, like I said, there's so many things it can do, but just kind of to expound a little bit on one area, the, the one of the really powerful aspects of this app is going to be like our groups feature. So if you're in a Sunday school group, your Sunday school group can, can post an update, hey, we're gonna not be meeting this week, we're having to postpone until next week. And then everybody, that's in your group, if they have, you know, the app or go online to look, um, they can see that update. Oh, we're not meeting this week. Um, and you can, like it said, you can post prayer requests to your groups, to your, to the ladies group, to the whole church. It's very flexible, and I think it's going to be a really good, good tool for our church to use, especially for communication. Um, you can pay for, we'll be able to pay for youth camp. Through it, So you don't have to give me a check or anything like that. Give Janet a check. You'll be able to pay through that if you would like. Um, if you do want to pay the office, cash or check, that's always fine. Um, again, this isn't a forced thing, but it, I think it'll be something that I think will really help unite our church in a lot of ways. Um, and this will be the last thing I talk about. I won't go. If you want to talk more about it, I can talk to, to you a lot more about it. But um, there is a kind of your main feed as you open up uh, your app on your phone. Um, there's what's called a news feed. That's going to be to where, where you see all the things that are coming up within the whole church that everyone will see. And then anything that your groups post, that will be in your kind of tailored feed for yourself. So whatever your groups are part of, those uh, announcements and information will pop up. So it's it's almost like a little kind of miniature Facebook that's only for our church, okay? And so hopefully there won't be any, you know, nonsense on there, hopefully, <laughs> like you see on Facebook all the time. So it'll be a, a place where you can go and see what's going on at the church and your group specifically. And I think it's going to be a good way for us to keep informed and updated and all that kind of things. So if you if you're... We're going to be talking about it more and more, and we're going to actually roll it out the first weekend of May, okay? So that's when we're going to really kind of try to launch that, and um, you guys can start jumping on board at that moment. And again, if you have any questions, just you can talk with me about it, and I'll uh, do my best to uh, share more about it. There's a lot of things it can do, so um, I'm excited about that and uh, what that's going to be for our church. So, all right. I guess that's, I guess there's no other announcements, so we'll go ahead and continue to jump right back into uh, worshiping and music. And so as we sing this next song, it's uh, called Sea of Victory, a bit, a bit of a new song. Uh, we have done it a couple of times, but um, I think I've shared on this before, but in the bridge of this song, it says, you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. And I think that is a message of hope that we can all use uh, consistently right now as we go through our day-to-day -day lives. Um, just remember, there's hope. Just because there's a lot of
craziness and chaos and things around us, he takes what the enemy meant for evil and he uses it for good. So as we sing this song, I hope that you would think on those words. Next song we're going to sing is How Great uh, Thou Art, speaking about the greatness of our God, how good He is, and uh, how He's rescued us basically from ourselves. So let's sing this together.
bless us with. Thank you that we can gather together again, Lord. Pray that we don't take advantage that we can come together and meet with each other, encourage each other, keep each other accountable, Lord. It's so important for us as Christians to meet together, God. Help us not forget that. Um, just help us to find ways, see ways, Lord, your glory, just that we can worship you in any situation, no matter what we're going through. No matter what's in front of us, Lord, just know that there is always something to praise you about, always something to worship for, Lord. You've blessed us in so many ways. God, I pray that you open our hearts and our minds to what Brother Stephen has for us today. Speak through him, and Lord, um, just help us to take you with us as we leave today. In your name I pray. Amen. Right. Amen, amen, amen. Matthew McConaughey doesn't have anything on me. I tell you what, I, I love Hannah's prayers. I really do. Man, I, I feel awesome. Y'all are like, uh-oh, here it comes. <laughs> Woo! I... I I'm not a big Mavericks fan. I'm really not a big professional sports fan anymore. Yeah, NASCAR, mainly for nap time, but I still like keeping up with it. Yeah. <laughs> she found out that if NASCAR's not on, the Masters works really well for nap time. <laughs> oh. Tuesday night, I think it was Tuesday night, I couldn't sleep. I got up. The Mavericks were playing Milwaukee, I think. Late game. I don't know if anybody saw this, but Luka Doncic comes down. And let me see if I can recreate it for you, okay? <laughs> this is what he does. He gets the ball with like 1.8 seconds left. And he's... Like dribbling out of control, there's a, two, you know, seven foot guys on either side of him. He's not looking at the basket. He's tripping. He's falling. He's dribbling, and then he shoots like that. Literally, this leg was up, and he jumps and swishes the net and wins the game. Okay, woo! I think I woke, woke Melody up, but it was. I sat there and I thought, that's how we ought to worship. That's the experience of coming into the presence of Almighty God. If we can get excited about some goofy seven-foot guy that to me, when I look at him, I think, that guy couldn't play basketball. It's just impossible. He just doesn't look like he, a basketball player, but he can play. If we can get excited about that guy swishing a basket at the end of a game, shouldn't we be able to get excited about our God? who created us, who loves us, who blesses us. We wouldn't even be here if it wasn't for him. And here we are today with opportunity to worship him. Take your Bible and open up to Isaiah chapter 6. To me, this is one of the most powerful scriptures in the entire Bible. Now, I want to remind you before we read this passage of the definition we gave last week of worship. Worship is communion with God in which believers by grace center their mind's attention and their heart's affection on the glory and the works of God. Put everything else aside, the roast in the oven, uh, changing your oil, guys, later on, mowing the backyard, that's what I've got to do. All that other stuff, it doesn't matter. It'll be there. It's not going anywhere. Focus solely and completely everything you are. Worship communion with God. That's your creator. In which believers, that's us, by grace. We, we wouldn't even be here doing it if it wasn't for God's grace in our lives. Center their mind's attention and their heart's affection on the glory and the works of God. Amen? Amen. Woo! That's what it's all about. 
And so today we're going to read a passage of scripture and we're going to look. And in your bulletin, you've got a little insert there with three different scriptural, not just making it up off the top of your head or what somebody thinks or hopes or dreams or feels worship is, but actual biblical patterns of worship. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 6 today. Psalm 95 is one that we use quite frequently here at Eastside. Revelation chapter 1, we'll look at that one a little bit later. But this morning we're going to look at Isaiah. It's a little bit more of a contemplative type passage where uh, we see um, Isaiah with an amazing experience coming into the power and presence of Almighty God. So let's all stand as we read God's word this morning. Isaiah chapter 6 beginning in verse 1. In the year of King Uzziah's death... I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, lofty and exalted, with the train of his robe filling the temple. Seraphim stood above him, each having six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called out to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth, the whole earth is filled with his glory. And the foundations of the thresholds trembled at the voice of him who called out while the temple was filling with smoke. (laughs) And then Isaiah said, Woe is me, for I am ruined. Because I'm a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the king. The Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a burning coal in his hand, which he had taken from the altar with tongs. And he touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips, and your iniquity is taken away, and your sin is forgiven. Glory! Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Who's us? The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, the triune God. Then I said, Here am I, send me. And he said, Go and tell this people. May God bless the reading, the hearing, and the doing of his word. You may be seated. This is just one of the many patterns of worship given to us in the Bible. And John Calvin was famously one who used this pattern of worship in services. I have designed services using this pattern of worship. Um, It's a... Pattern. It's a lengthier pattern. It's a longer pattern. It deals with uh, more, as you can see in your handout, more what I would call steps of coming into the presence of Almighty God, especially when you're trying to uh, come into Him in a situation where we need to cleanse and purify ourselves. I like to use this passage uh, to God and help when you're doing a Lord's Supper service and you're contemplating your sins before a risen Savior and before you come to the table. So, gives you a little background on it. It's not exclusive. There's many patterns. This is certainly one. Revelation in verse 1 and 2. God reveals Himself to believers. And folks, we better be prepared. When God comes in all of his glory. When he reveals himself to us in his holiness, in his righteousness, in his glory. When we see him as he truly is. We better be prepared. And we better be ready. This is God on the throne. This is actually a little... Uh, if you will, peek, a vision, much like John had in the book of Revelation, into the glorious throne in heaven. 
I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, lofty and exalted with the train of His robe filling the temple. It's honestly just reading it, I don't know that we really get the full impact. I'm not even sure Isaiah had the words to describe what he was seeing. Just like uh, I tell people, don't get too caught up in what John was trying to describe and say in Revelation. He didn't have the language. The words were not available to describe all the glory that he was seeing. We won't really understand it. We won't be able to contemplate it and really take it all in until we get there. Revelation. God reveals himself to us. Brother Tony shared a great testimony in Sunday school this morning where he was at a funeral and God revealed himself to him. And in that moment, and this is part of this worship experience, when God reveals himself to you, He's going to ask you to do something. And then you have to decide, am I going to do it or am I going to say no? Adoration is the next thing. That's our response from God revealing himself to us and his revelation. And what is the response here in this passage in verse 3 and 4? First of all, we see the angels, and they respond to the presence of Almighty God. And basically, when God reveals Himself in all His glory, we have to fall on our face before Him. Because we are in the presence of holiness. The the seraphim stood above Him, each having six wings... Two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew, and one called out to the other and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. The only possible response, even from the demons when they encountered the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Jesus himself, was they fell on their face. And cried out, what do you have to do with us, son of the most high God? And it's just to acknowledge that God is holy and righteous. And we're not. We're sinners. That's been my struggle for a long time. With the famous Christian song that I love and I listen to and I care about. I can only imagine. What will you do when you see your Savior for the first time? I don't know. I really don't know what you'll do. But I just know that after reading and studying in Scripture, when most people encounter the living God, they fall on their face. It's hard to say. But I do know this. Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah... A holy man. One who basically had given his whole life in service and obedience to the Lord. Then realizes he is in the presence of holiness and perfection and glory. And he cries out, woe is me for I am ruined. Confession. Oh, we all need it. Because we see and must acknowledge our sins in the presence of a holy and righteous God. I'm ruined. I woe is me. I must die. I'm unclean. I'm not worthy to be in your presence. That's why I say we use this. I try to use this pattern many times in designing a, a service possibly where we're taking the Lord's Supper. To give us an opportunity to look inside of ourselves and acknowledge to ourselves that we're sinners and the only thing that separates us from that lost and dying world that's living in darkness is the blood of our Savior that's it and it's confessing those sins to him in Revelation 1 17 John on the Isle of Patmos from the Revelation 1 model and pattern of worship 
also falls on his face as a dead man in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. And remember, I told you uh, last week that Jesus accepts worship. He accepts the worship of demons. He accepts the worship of man, as we read earlier in the passage of Matthew 14, when he gets back on the boat with Peter after walking on the water. All the disciples fell down and worshipped. And Jesus didn't do what a lot of angels do. He didn't say, oh, no, 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 don't worship me. Or, or stop, stop doing that. That's not appropriate. That's not right. You know why he didn't? Because he's God. Jesus is God. Amen. See, what the world is trying to do right now is change who Jesus is. They want Jesus to be a good man. A nice guy, a wise person, a person who would love and accept everybody. And he did. He died for everybody. But his message was, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. We have to acknowledge sin in our life. And sin is disobedience to God. And... The acknowledgement that we're sinners is what causes us to fall on our face as Isaiah does, as the disciples did before Jesus, as John did before the uh, glorified, resurrected body of Jesus in Revelation chapter 1. As we read last week in 2 Chronicles 7-3, when the smoke of God's holiness and presence comes into the temple and moistens our eyes. Because we realize we fall short of the glory of God. But hallelujah, we're not done yet. Expiation, verse 6 and 7. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a burning coal in his hand, which he had taken from the altar with tongs, and he touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips, and your iniquity is taken away, and your sins are forgiven. Why burning coal? If some burning coal happened to touch your lips, that's going to hurt, right? Our salvation was bought and paid for, it's free. But it's not cheap. It cost our Savior his life. So this burning coal is representative of God's purifying grace, mercy, and love. And it touches his lips. God forgives. Now, it's not automatic. I use the acronym FAITH, forsaking all, I trust Him. And Him being the Lord Jesus Christ who came and died to take away the sins of the whole world. And I put my faith and trust in what He did for me on the cross of Calvary. And that His shedding of blood paid for my sins. Paid the penalty for all of our sins. For all eternity. And that forgiveness is available. But it's not automatic. It's available to everybody, but it's not automatic. Why? It's very simple. It's impossible for us as sinners. We have sin in our lives. Even today, we will sin. We will say things. We will do things. We will think things that are not godly. They are not holy. They are not righteous. They are not perfect. And in some way, we all fall short of the glory of God each and every day. The saved and the unsaved. The difference is we have given ourselves to the blood of Jesus. The blood sacrifice. The Lamb of God who came to take away the sins of the world. Well, does that mean if I just believe in Jesus? Well, even the demons believed and trembled. And bowed at his feet. But that doesn't mean that they're saved. No. We have to confess 
We have to confess. We have to repent. We have to turn. Faith is also an acronym for forgiveness is available. It's available to all, but it's not automatic because it's impossible for sin to enter into the presence of a holy and righteous God. Therefore, our part is to acknowledge that we're sinners and repent and turn from our sin. And then we have heaven. Here and in the hereafter. That's the expiation. Do you see the pattern that is forming of true worship? Where the gospel is presented in every true worship experience. In verse 6 and 7 we see that the iniquity is removed. The sin is forgiven. God is the great judge but he's also the attorney. And he said and banged his gavel and said forgiven. No longer look upon the sins. And then the last and maybe the most important step for us as believers is the proclamation, the spoken word, the revealing of God's purpose and mission for our lives, for believers. That's why we gather. That's why we're here. Look what it says there in verse uh, 8. I heard the voice of the Lord. This is God himself speaking. And it echoes the same thing Jesus spoke to his followers, his disciples, and to us in Matthew 20, verses 18 through 20. Go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. What does God say here? I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Now, I just want you to think about this for a minute. He doesn't say what they're going to do. He just says, who's willing to step up to the plate? Now, I got to tell you, if when I was younger, I probably wouldn't do it at all now, but when I was younger, if somebody said, hey, um, Neil Carroll's pitching, and we want you to come up and see if you can get a hit off of him. I'd probably take that bet. I'd probably say, give me a bat. Let me see if he can get one over the plate where I can hit it, okay? But in comparison, and I'm going to use players from my time growing up loving baseball. If somebody said, you're going to step up and you're going to face left-hander Sandy Koufax, probably one of the greatest pitchers that ever lived. Uh, I'm probably going to say, no, thank you. Number one, I don't want to get beaned by a 100-mile-an-hour fastball. But I probably couldn't hit him anyways unless I just got lucky. God here is just saying, who's gonna, who will step up to the plate? Who is willing? He doesn't tell them who they're going to face or what they're going to do, what's going to happen. And I love it because Isaiah he doesn't hesitate. He doesn't say, wait a minute, give me a little bit more information. Help me to understand, you know, whatever. Is there going to be a, a conference? Is there going to be a training seminar? Are we going to have a, a six-week study on how to witness? No, he just says, I'll do it. Here am I, send me. The spoken word revealing God's purpose and mission for our lives, for all believers. God is constantly saying to us, whether we hear him or not, especially thinking about what Jeremy taught this morning in the men's breakfast, we need to be quiet sometimes and listen to what God is saying to us. We can't hear Him because we're so noisy and so distracted. But I can tell you pretty much what He's saying. Who will go for me? It's a dedication. A dedication of God's family. All of God's children are served at the table. 
And so every time we worship, every time we gather, he's asking a question of every one of us. Who will go? And guess what? He expects an answer. Every time we walk out that door where it says, coming in, enter to worship. And when you're going out, by the way, somebody told me that Marvin Donnell, when, when he pastored here, is the one that put those signs up. And I praise him for that. That little sign under the exit sign says, lead to serve. Who will go for us? Here, my Lord, send me. I don't need to know what you're going to tell me to do or how you're going to do it. And guess what, folks? You're not going to know either. You're not going to know until you get out these doors and you go home, you go to work, you go to your school students, you go into the grocery store, you drive to Walmart, heaven forbid. Every single place you go, all week long, every time, who will go? Here my Lord send me. He expects an answer. Enter to worship. Lead to serve. It's not a question, it's a statement. The world, this country, the state of Texas, Comanche County, the city, will never be won to Christ from the pulpit. It's not going to happen. It's God's people who must answer the call. And so literally, if you want to change this world, if you want to change this country, then it's up to you. We all are called by the Father to do our part. We've got to dedicate ourselves. That's the time of the, the worship where we, the whole congregation has an opportunity to respond. The believers have a chance to respond. The lost people have a chance to respond. Mostly, though, it's for the believers to respond. To dedicate yourself, to serve God and to answer His call. To give of ourselves, to give of the blessings that He has given to us. To answer as Isaiah did, here am I, send me. And isn't it interesting to note that we must respond even before God tells us what to do. You remember what Moses said at the burning bush? Moses, his reply was basically, here am I, Lord, send somebody else. Uh, may I offer up my brother Aaron? He's a much better speaker than I am. Why don't you use him? Here's somebody else. I can't. And I'm saying this because we're all there. We all say, I can't do it. I'm scared, I'm chicken, I don't know what to say, whatever. We come up with all the excuses, but here's God's reply. You ready? Don't worry about it. I'm with you. I'll tell you what to say. I'll show you what to do. And this goes back to what Jeremy was teaching in that men's breakfast. Listen to me, and I'll tell you what to do. I'll show you what to do. But you've got to listen to me. That's the commission. Then God gives the mission in verse 9. He says, go and tell this people. And I, I didn't read all the way through this passage. Um, but this is when true worship occur, occurs. Is when God gives us our mission and it's so wonderful and it's so awesome because we've been in the presence of Almighty God. And I can tell you right now, when you're in God's presence and you've fallen on your face in glory and recognized His holiness and realized that He has forgiven your sin, you don't want to leave. God sends you out. You'd stay here forever. You'd never want to go. And I've been in a few worship services like that. I was at one at Southwestern Seminary when God's Spirit just broke out. I remember the president of the seminary at that time at Southwestern in Fort Worth came in and he said, don't worry about going to your class. Just, just stay in here and keep worshiping. Was in a worship service like that at Super Summer one time at uh, East Texas Baptist University. 
they had a big giant what they call rainbow celebration worship service and uh, they dismissed all the school colors to their schools and there was a pretty good contingent of other people who were in the auditorium people from the community and the college and different things we were privileged to have Chris Tomlin leading our worship that year and we probably stayed in there another hour and just worshiped and God was there and nobody wanted to leave but the reality is God is going to send us out who is going to go and he Isaiah says here am I send me then God gives him the commission go and tell this people and of course our answer then is typical men women how long to who you know we got all, show me all the details tell, help me work it out and if you look he looks over there in verse 11 it says then I said how long and he, he answered, until cities are devastated and without inhabitants, houses are without people, and the land is utterly desolate. Let me translate that for you. It means until there's no one left to tell. In other words, you, we are commissioned to go until Jesus comes back. Until the end of time. Or I tell you to quit. We've got all caught up in the last couple of decades and all this church growth stuff, do this program, have these games, have these shows, build this, do this, all that. But the reality is we need to follow the Lord Jesus Christ and fall in love with His church growth program, which is basically this, sell everything you have and come follow me. Yeah, that's the response I have too. Let the dead bury the dead. You go and tell until I tell you to stop or you die or there's no one left to tell. We need to get ready. We've got to prepare ourselves because... True worship is coming in heaven. No matter what we've experienced here, we are going to experience worship in spirit and in truth when we get into eternity. And the one thing I can promise you is it will never be boring. Have you experienced true worship lately? Do you have unconfessed sin? Is your past holding you back? then I am inviting you this morning, and even if you're watching on live stream, come to the table and let it all go. Let God have it, and then say, Here am I, Lord, send me. Confess the sin of anger, of bitterness, of dissension. We like to focus on the big sins, but it's the little sins of bitterness, anger, resentment, pride, jealousy that are holding us back and keeping the church of the Lord Jesus Christ from being the church. So now is the time to begin to heal so that we can cast off the burdens and the grudges and the hurts and the betrayal and leave them here at the altar because Jesus is the only one who can deal with them anyways. So I'm going to invite you, if you're here in person or if you or watching on live stream to bow your heads and to pray with me. This is the time of dedication and commission. Heavenly Father, Lord God, whatever decisions that are on our hearts and minds, may we offer them up to you. May we listen to the, your Holy Spirit as He speaks to us, as He reveals to us anything in our hearts that is not of you that we need to confess and turn over to you. doesn't have to confess it to the preacher. We need to confess it to our Father in heaven. Lord God, help us to repent and help us to follow you. And the command that you have given us to go here in Isaiah by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in Matthew 
Go and tell. Go and make disciples. Go and show God's love to a lost and dying world. Help us, Father, to take that commission seriously and live it out in our lives each and every day. Take this time and use it for your honor and glory. And we pray it in Jesus' blessed and holy name. Hello, I'm Brother Stephen Schulte, pastor at Eastside Baptist Church. I want to thank you for viewing our live stream worship broadcast. If the Lord has spoken to you and you feel you would like spiritual counsel, uh, you have questions, or you, you would like to know more about a relationship with Jesus Christ, please feel free to contact us through any of the ways listed below. Someone will get back to you soon. Or you can come by our church office located at 207 FM 3381 across from Comanche Junior High School. Just ask for Brother Stephen or our worship leader, Brother Wes Carroll. Here at Eastside, we want this video stream to be an encouragement and a blessing to all who are watching. If you've enjoyed this service, please let us know by liking, commenting, or friending us on Facebook. Finally, May the peace of God, the presence of the Holy Spirit, and the joy and love of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, bless and be with you all. Amen. trust that you had an encounter with the living God. And if you did, then there's no way you can leave this room this morning and be the same. You cannot come into God's holy presence and not be changed. 
We have a young man that's coming this morning to say that he, his life has changed. Sutton Fishback. He has accepted Christ as his Savior and Lord and um, has asked Jesus to forgive him of his sin. And he wants to follow Christ in believer's baptism this morning. So all in favor of this decision, say amen. amen. Give him a big hand. We appreciate and love God's spirit moving and working. And I thank you for his parents and uh, their uh, work in discipling their children. That's a big part of it as well. And uh, they're going to be here at the front in just a minute. And I'm going to ask... Miles to come stand with his friend Sutton because Miles is going to get baptized here pretty quick too and then um, let's get um, Tasha are you their Sunday school teacher well come on over here we're going to put you up here with them and I know you've taught and known Melinda for many years so uh, and I'm going to ask if Dr. Fishback would come up as well because he's part of that family. Aiden, you come up too. <laughs> Evelyn, come on up too. Y'all all come up here. They're all part of it. I know how it works. And I praise the Lord for it. Um, this is where discipleship begins, is with your own children. I'm excited. They'll be here in the front in just a few minutes. You come by, shake their hand, hug their neck, let them know you love them. All right, let's all stand up. You got the announcements and everything else. May God bless you this week. Take the name of Jesus wherever you go. Amen? Amen. Play us out, Brother West. Let's sing victory in Jesus. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How He gave His life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about His growing Of His precious blood's atoning And I repented of my sins And won the victory Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior Oh